So the next step is box on ramp. Now I'm going to make the ramp part of the ground here. So the ramp is fixed to it. And so we have basically box and ramp. So as before, first thing to do is to separate the drawings. So I have the box here and I have the ramp. I do recommend drawing the box in the same orientation as it is right here. It's going to make, I think visually when we do normal force, make a little bit more sense. And we go to our checklist. So step by step. Friction. Well, we'll come to friction last. Let's take the easy one. We'll do weight. Uh, we do have an object here that does have weight. So we put our down arrow there and our up arrow there. Now, where do we actually put it, whether we put it on the ramp or on the ground? Since the ramp and the ground are one object here, you know, anywhere down here is fine. If we separated the ramp from the ground, then it definitely has to be on the ground part. But I have only one small object besides the, the planet, and so done. There is no other because I didn't introduce anything into the problem. There's no tension because I don't have ropes, pulleys, or anything like that. We do have friction and we have normal force. So let's do normal force, tackle normal force first since we've dealt with that. Remember that normal here is a math term, or I'm introducing it if you don't remember it. It is a math term meaning perpendicular. So the normal force is perpendicular to the surfaces of contact as mentioned in a previous video. So when I draw my normal force, I need to make sure that it is perpendicular to the surfaces of contact. Well, the surfaces of contact are at this angle here so my normal force has to be perpendicular to that. So one normal force is up at that angle there, and the other one is down at that angle there. I have only two objects touching, so done. Normal force, done. Friction, there is now desired motion. If this is a frictionless surface, this box is going to slide down. Well, friction opposes that relative motion. In other words, that motion relative to the ground. Since this is gonna move down the ramp, the friction acts up the ramp. And then that friction is gonna be acting down the ramp onto the ramp. So again, they are anti-parallel to each other. Done. We're gonna expand on that one in another video. If I separated the box, the ramp from the ground, So it's still box on ramp, except now we have a third object. And I'm hoping that you can pause it at this point, probably do your best guess in order to, to see if you know how to do this, and then you can check it against what we're about to do. But as before, we have weight acting down. I now have two small objects, so I need subscripts, so I'm gonna do W sub B for the box, and then W sub B for the box here. I have the ramp acting down, or the weight on the ramp acting down on the ramp. So W sub R, W sub R. So gravitational force taken care of. I have normal force. So I have this normal force here between the box and the ramp. And then I have a normal force here between the ramp and the ground. Still no tension, still no other. Friction, this wants to go down the ramp, and so there's friction acting up the ramp on the box and down the ramp on the ramp. But we now have the ramp right here. So as the box is moving down the ramp, the, this wants to get shot out that way. If this is light enough and that's heavy enough, this actually will be shot that way. And so the friction acting on the ramp will be to the right. And then that way on the ground. And so that's box on ramp on ground. So at this point we've introduced everything except for tension and then other which is a problem specific thing. And this is in the force and sing sing sing. Well box one. Uh, mass, mass one, mass two, we have ground. Now we're introducing the rope here. This is an ideal rope. Ideal rope has three main characteristics. It is massless. 
It is frictionless when it rubs against something. And it is stretchless. So we don't have to worry about any elastic force in this particular problem. Elastic force or ideal spring force will come in later in the course, uh, sort of near the end. Frictionless means that it's just basically going to run over the pulley and the pulley is not going to turn. And then massless, we don't have to worry about the weight of the rope. And if this is 251, potentially we're going to bring in mass of the rope later on. 151 and 251, we're definitely going to do away with the frictionless aspect, but we're going to maintain stretchless in terms of ropes at this point. The pulley here is an ideal pulley. And an ideal pulley is frictionless at the bearings and it is massless. Occasionally we'll do a problem later on in the course where it is not frictionless at the bearings and we definitely, when we get the rotational motion for 151 and 251, it will, we will do away with the massless aspect of it. We will give it mass. So when doing the force diagram here, as always, we break it up into the separate di objects. I've got object one, I have mass two here, I have the rope, and now comes the question of, is the pulley part of the ground or not? Well, the pulley's not turning because of our ideal situation at this point, and so what I want to do is make the pulley part of the ground. So this is one of those things that in the test problem that you get, the complex force diagram test problem, that I separate the objects so you don't have to worry about whether you consider it part of the ground or not. I will let you know. So those are the four objects involved in this problem. And again, we have our checklist here. So there is no other. So at this point, we can only eliminate one force right there. Weight is probably the simplest one, so let's deal with that. So this has weight acting down, W1, W1. Mass 2 has a weight, W2, W2. Since all of this is one object, I can draw these arrows anywhere on this. On this, I try to draw weight 1 basically underneath the mass 1 here. Uh, but it doesn't have to. I mean, it could have made that W2 and this W1 and it'd still be technically correct. But trying to have the depth arrows make some sense. Normal force, we have normal force here. So just for contrast, unlike the last one I did, I have a normal force here and I have a normal force here because mass one is being held up. There is no normal force to mass two here. The only thing it is touching is the rope. It's not touching the side of the cliff, uh, although I have had problems where I've done that. But mass two here is not touching the cliff and touching the rope. The contact with the rope, we're going to take into account in tension. So we're not dealing, there are no normal forces on mass two. There is another pair of normal forces, though, in the fact that there is contact between the rope and the pulley. The exact direction of the normal force on the rope, we don't know, but I know it has to be somewhere in this range right here. This is the point that's actually in contact. So it has to be somewhere in that range. And so I just sort of generically, I'm gonna call it Y sub R for rope. And then the one on the pulley has to be in the opposite direction. So that's all the contact we have. So normal force done. Friction, since that's not, since that's one we've already covered, the only thing that's gonna rub against anything else here is mass one is gonna rub against the ground here. Matter of fact, mass one is gonna to move to your right. And so therefore friction acting on mass one will be to the left on mass one and on the right. And tension, looks like I abandoned my color coding there. All right, so tension. Tension is a pulling force. So the rope is being pulled that way, but mass one's being pulled to the right. Matter of fact, if mass one's gonna to move to the right, assuming it, if it starts at rest and then starts moving to the right, there has to be something pulling it that way. Now it could be moving to the right and slowing down, in which case the net force is that way. 
However, the rope is pulling mass one to the right, and so this is a tension here. The other part of that pair is right there, tension pulling back on the rope. So pulling forces point towards each other, like you have for the tension and for the weights. Normal force is a pushing force, and so those are away from each other. Now at the other end of the rope, there's also tension. Given our ideal nature of the rope, the tension is the same throughout, and so I have a tension here and a tension here. If you did want to put in subscripts, or if we lost some of our ideal nature there, we would put a subscript here and here. Those would have the same subscript, and those would have the same subscript right there, since that's, a, that's the pair, that force, that's the force pair, and that's the force pair. And so that's how you would do the subscripts. However, for a single rope at this point in the course, then you really don't need to have subscripts. When we do away, when we actually have the pulley turning because of the rope, so we've done away with the frictionless aspect and we've done away with the Nestle's aspect here, then we actually do need to have those subscripts. But until then, we don't have, that's, those are optional at this point. But that's the force diagram for, I guess, box attached to hanging mass. Uh, come up with your own name. All right, I'm gonna do one more and they'll be ready for the test level problem. All right, so we have two masses attached by a rope hanging over a, a pulley attached to a wedge. And the wedge on the ground, I'm gonna make part of the same object. So I'm not gonna treat them independently. So the first thing is we draw, the, draw them separate. Uh, let's give a label here, we'll call this box one and two, one and two. And then we have our wedge pulley ground system. Go to our checklist. Or if this is 110 again, that would be a W instead of G. G for gravitational force or W for weight. Weight's the only gravitational force we're dealing with right now. So let's deal with weight first. That's the easiest one. I have basically three objects besides the planet. This is the planet because it's part, a small section of the planet. I have weight one acting down here, weight one acting up here. Over here, I have weight two acting down. I have weight two acting up. The rope is massless, because an ideal rope, assume ideal. And so it has no weight. So that's done. Normal force, we have contact here. We have contact between one and the ramp, the rope and the ramp, and two and the ramp. And so we've got a group of normal forces there. So y sub one, y sub one, y sub two, Y sub two. And this is one of the reasons why I ask you or recommend that you draw the mass at the same orientation is when you're drawing the normal force, it makes it a lot more sense. I have seen students draw mass two like that and they have weight two acting down, that's not a problem. But drawing Y two, they still tend to draw it upwards when they do it that way, when in fact it's gonna be at an angle. So again, recommend same orientation. This is being pushed up, y sub r, y sub r. Tension is still relatively new, so uh, let's do tension in a different color here. So the rope is pulling up on mass one, the mass one is pulling down on the rope. It's an ideal rope, so I don't need subscripts for the single rope. I have tension acting this way, tension acting that way. I got my pairs at both ends of the rope. That's one of the big things there is that if I have a rope, there should be a tension pair at each end and done. So tension is done, no other, and friction. Friction's the tricky one here because in reality, I didn't give you enough information to know because which way this thing is going to go depends upon these two angles down here and depends upon the masses involved. So. Since I didn't tell you what the size of the masses are or those angles, you cannot figure it out from the information given. It is gonna go one way or the other. Or potentially it's gonna stay still. It wants to go one way or the other because friction doesn't necessarily depend on movement. It depends on desired movement. So the way that we're gonna to have to deal with this is I'm gonna to have to just tell you which way it's gonna go 
Okay, let's assume acceleration and velocity are basically up on the right, down on the left. So given that information, we can now fill in friction. Friction will be acting up this way because mass one is going to be going down the ramp. So F1, F1. Mass two is going to be going up the ramp. And so F2, F2. And there's actually a PowerPoint for a test level problem, so I don't necessarily have to do it, do it here, but there should be a video also, so you can check that out. A video of mine actually doing it in class with students. <laughs>